Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, whatever your relative position to the sun is right now. Uh, uh, welcome to uh, Zeek Week 2020. Uh, so uh, this was this is our first virtual Zeek Week conference. Uh, when it was apparent that we would not be able to meet in person uh, and that there was no possibility of even pushing that back uh, in time to accomplish that goal, uh, we quickly pivoted to holding an entirely virtual event. Uh, we have all been blown away by the exceptional response. Uh, we have, as of this morning, had about 1,400 registrants for day two and day three. Uh, and we had several hundred participants yesterday in the training portion. Uh, this is far and away more than we've ever had for any of our in-person events. Uh, and it certainly caused us to have some discussions internally about how we can try to capture this uh, virtual participation uh, for future events. Uh, I would note that we're keenly interested in uh, feedback from the community about how this virtual event went on. Uh, you'll all get a survey and I encourage you to fill that out and provide feedback. Uh, this year, we're also debuting a new two-track format. Uh, we have day two set up uh, focused solely on the user experience. Uh, so we're trying to encourage participation for people who aren't necessarily writing scripts, uh, but are doing amazing things with the data that Zeek generates. Uh, tomorrow on day three, we will have a developer-focused track. Uh, Again, uh, that is going to be much more focused on future roadmap of, of, roadmap of Zeek, uh, feature discussions, uh, and getting into the nitty gritty, gritty details of the core. Uh, that being said, uh, even if you're not someone that writes code uh, for Zeek, you may still find the discussions uh, interesting, uh, and uh, end users should certainly track what happens in, that, uh, in those talks. Uh, so we are also this year going with much shorter talks. Uh, this is partly a nod toward uh, Zoom fatigue. Uh, we wouldn't be able to have a full eight hour day. Uh, so we went with shorter talks. Uh, we're doing 15 to 20 minute talks. Um, we hope that these will be uh, concise and impactful, uh, but we would like to try to have uh, expanded versions of the more popular talks uh, put on as monthly Zeek presentations in the future. Uh, again, that's going to be driven by the survey results. Uh, so uh, please do let us know which talks you think uh, were uh, engaging and would benefit from having a little bit longer presentation in the future. Uh, as we started to look at uh, doing a virtual event, uh, I think one of the biggest hurdles that we had to get past was trying to figure out how to simulate that hallway conference experience, uh, the random interactions that you get with people and especially the interactions with speakers that you can have after they're finished talking. Uh, to try to simulate some of that, we've got a number of Slack channels set up this year. Uh, we have per talk Slack channels uh, where hopefully speakers will be able to engage with uh, attendees. Uh, and we also have some general purpose Slack channels as well. Uh, again, we hope that this helps build community and helps people build and establish relationships, uh, which is, again, a lot of what conferences are about. Uh, in addition this year, uh, I'm excited to note that we have a Capture the Flag event that is going on. Uh, that opened up this morning and will run uh, through the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, this is done by the hard work of Anthony Kazaa. Uh, thank you very much for all of the effort that you've put into getting this together, uh, and obviously all the hard work you'll put in today and tomorrow helping to hold the event. Uh, please go to zeekweek.ctf.corelight.io uh, if you have questions uh, or are you are interested in participating. Uh, I will note that there is a Slack channel dedicated for this in, uh, event uh, that is at ctf-capture-flag. Um, Please be careful in that Slack channel to not shout out the answers to the so, to solutions to the problems uh, as that will spoil the experience for everyone else. Uh, and last but not least, I'll note that there is a $100 Amazon gift card uh, that will be awarded to the winner. Uh, I would encourage everyone to participate. Uh, you may amaze yourself at how far you get along uh, and it's a great opportunity to learn uh, more about Zeek. Uh, 
So I'd like to take a moment to thank some folks who have put in a lot of work to make this event happen in a short time. Uh, Amber Grainer has been instrumental in coordinating and organizing uh, and running uh, things. Uh, and Aaron Soto has also been uh, invaluable with helping with registrations, corralling speakers, uh, and generally just sort of being the man behind the curtain. Uh, in addition, I'd like to thank the Zeke leadership team. Uh, we all served as an impromptu program committee. Uh, when it became apparent we'd need to do this event in a short period of time, uh, we didn't feel that we could do a formal program committee process. So we served uh, as the impromptu committee, uh, trying to help brainstorm ideas for speakers uh, and making sure that we had a good, exciting uh, program set up. Uh, last but not least, uh, I'd like to extend a thanks to all of the speakers who are putting in their time uh, to make this event successful. Uh, and I would like to highlight the contributions of uh, Ashish Sharma, uh, who put on a very well-received uh, training session yesterday on Zeek scripting, uh, and also Fatima Banatwala, who assisted, uh, who together with me, put on an introduction to Zeke training. Uh, my understanding is that both of those were pretty well received uh, and Fatima and Ashish put a tremendous amount of time in uh, getting these together in a compressed timeline. So for a lot of us, it probably feels like it's been 25 years since we all got together in Seattle last year, uh, but as it would happen, uh, it has been 25 years since Fern Paxson wrote the first lines of code for what was at the time called Bro. Uh, in the intervening 25 years, uh, I think, you know, Vern and none of the rest of us would have predicted how far things have traveled and how much this community has grown. Uh, it, it continues to amaze me uh, where Zeke gets to uh, from its early days uh, as something that was primarily focused around higher ed and used within the higher ed community. Uh, and now we see Zeke listed as a requirement for job uh, applications. And uh, we continue to see participation from the commercial sector and from the government sector. Uh, I'm again, always amazed to see what uh, people are doing and where people are going uh, with Zeke. Um, the accelerating pace of change in uh, code has also been pretty astonishing. Uh, for someone that tries to track very closely uh, what the changes are, uh, it, it has become harder and harder as more and more amazing things have been added. Uh, we've seen in recent years the shift to using broker as the communication library. Uh, there have been a lot of significant changes in the core of Zeek code over the last few years as they've been able to add open source developers to the project. Uh, and there are some pretty exciting things happening around uh, new protocol parser code called SPICY uh, that will undoubtedly be discussed more tomorrow. Uh, again, really amazed at how far things have come in the intervening years. Uh, if you would like a little more of a view of the history of uh, Zeek, uh, I would strongly encourage you to go back and look at Vern's keynote uh, from the 20th anniversary back at BroCon 2015. Uh, that was a great talk that grounds where things started uh, and how the project had grown to that point. Uh, and I think it still has relevance and resonance uh, today. Uh, since we last met in Seattle, uh, the leadership team has been hard at work putting together a formal document uh, to govern, to uh, describe our governance process. Uh, that was published earlier this year. Uh, the goal of that document was to lay out uh, what the leadership team should be responsible for, uh, what the various roles on the team should be, and a process for uh, getting involved in the leadership team. Uh, this year, we were able to hold community nominations. Uh, so we opened up the process to have people either self-nominate or they could be nominated by members of the community. Uh, we had a process where people could uh, provide testimonials uh, to highlight the contributions of prospective members. Uh, and then this year, we conducted voting by the existing leadership team. Uh, we do have a goal to try to involve the community in the voting process the next time around in two years. Uh, I think the largest challenge we have to solve there is how to identify community members who have standing to participate in the voting. So 
Uh, that is something that we look to do in the future, uh, but I think we've made tremendous progress in the last year. Uh, and I wanna thank everybody on the leadership team for all of their efforts in getting those nominations, getting this process together and getting us to the point where we are now. Uh, we uh, conducted the votes a couple weeks ago, and uh, I am now happy to start announcing the new leadership team. Um, before I do that, I would like to take a moment uh, to publicly thank uh, Adam Slagle and Mikhail Perzinski. Uh, they are both stepping down from the leadership team. Uh, Adam has been around for uh, a number of years and has been involved in the leadership team since the very first days of its beginning. Uh, and has been a significant member of the community, uh, as has Mikhail. Uh, I'm sure we've all seen the wonderful technical talks and other things he's done. Uh, he was quite helpful yesterday and uh, continues to volunteer in a variety of ways. Uh, and again, I wanna thank both of them for their participation and I look forward to uh, buying them a drink when we can be in the same room again. Uh, so, uh, I would like to introduce the new leadership team. Uh, we have a couple new members uh, and we now have uh, formal role-based seats. Uh, Amber Grainer is in the community seat. Uh, Vern Paxson uh, is in the founder seat uh, and he will remain so as long as he wants to put up with us. Uh, we have a technical lead seat that is filled by Robin Somer. Uh, and then we have two new members. Uh, Fatima Banakwala will be joining us. Uh, she currently works at ESNet, uh, has been around the Zeek project for a number of years, uh, doing really amazing things with uh, the weird log and improving the DNS scripting uh, in Zeek. Uh, in addition, Nick Turley, uh, who is a security architect at Brigham Young University will also be joining the leadership team, uh, Nick, has been around for a good 10 years and uh, is an active uh, and vocal member of the community. Uh, I look forward to uh, having both of them on the leadership team going forward. Uh, among the returning members, uh, we have Johanna Aman, uh, myself, Ashish Sharma, and Seth Hall. Uh, in addition, uh, we conducted a process to select a new chair and uh, from today and going forward for at least the next two years, uh, Johanna Aman will be the Zeke leadership team chair. Um, I want to thank Johanna for uh, taking that role, uh, and I wish her the best of luck and success going forward uh, herding this uh, group of cats. Uh, so uh, that is uh, the end of my remarks thus far. Uh, I will note uh, if you'd like to get involved uh, in the leadership team or involved in the community in general, uh, I would note that uh, Amber Grainer will be doing a talk today talking about how to get engaged with the community. And uh, I really look forward to all of the other exciting talks that we have set up for today uh, and tomorrow. And again, thanks to everyone who put on the training yesterday. Uh, and of course, everyone who participated. Uh, even the trainers learn things uh, from the questions that people asked. Uh, so we learned stuff and hopefully the rest of you also learned a lot and gained a lot out of those uh, talks. Uh, again, thank you very much everyone for attending. Uh, we hope that this is a really successful event. Uh, please do provide us with feedback via the surveys and uh, please do engage in the discussions that go on in the Slack channel. Uh, thank you and uh, that is all. <laughs>